Affinity's new layout studio is very similar to something like InDesign. And in this video, we're gonna cover all of the different tools in the toolbar on the left. So first of all, just make sure that you've switched to the layout studio. And then what we're gonna do is start from the top. So we have the move tool. We've covered this in other videos, but very simply put, this enables us to resize images and we can rotate them. Where are you? There you are. Or we can hold shift to rotate and snap to 15 degree increments and move things around. So it's a pretty essential tool really. Now underneath this, we have the node tool. Now this is great for editing individual points. So if we just jump ahead and create something really quick, don't worry, we'll come back to this beauty. We can then grab the node tool, which is very similar to Illustrator's direct selection tool. And we can now adjust the different anchor points. So if you are making custom shapes and you want to adjust the different nodes, this tool is perfect for that. Right here, we have the frame text tool. So what we can do is click that, click and drag. We can type some text or we can right click and add filler text. And if we select everything up here, you've got your panel with text frame related options. And we've also got character properties here. You can see it switches us to that tab. We've got it loaded in this studio. Or we can click this arrow here and oh, there's nothing hiding under there. But the paragraph options are here. So in this layout, it does merge your character and paragraph options into this suite of panels on the right hand side. So very useful. And with this tool, we can adjust the text frame and the Paragraph of text will wrap onto separate lines, which is very useful. And it's kind of related, so let's just cover it now. We've got the artistic text tool. I don't know why these two are separate in this studio, but there we go. Basically with this, we can click, we can start typing, and then we can use the move tool to resize and customize the text. So there we go, we have dasadads. And those are your two ways for adding text in the layout studio. Right, what have we got here? The table tool. Right, let's click and drag and we can create a table. And there we go, Excel has invaded Affinity. So what we can do here with this is we can grab these handles here to adjust the number of rows and columns. And then I think with this tool selected, we can select one cell like so. And then we have some options up here. So we could change the cell color. Oh, there we go, red. Or we could do this for multiple cells. So let's try and select everything. And I think there's an option up here, table, table format. Nope, that's not it. Let's try table. There we go, that's what I'm looking for. So then we can control the fills. We can adjust the cell height so we can make them bigger and wider. And if you did want to give them a bit more padding, you could do that here. Okay, next up the pen tool and we briefly looked at this earlier and we can use this to create custom shapes. And we've covered this in another video that if it's not up on the channel already, it will be up soon. And we can use this to make custom shapes or we can use it to mask the image below. So we could pop our lovely inky graphic inside that shape or we could just use it to make a selection and then command or control D to deselect. Right, we have the shape tools. Now we've covered these in previous videos and they're honestly fantastic. We can just click one. We can create a star. We have all these options at the top and you can adjust them here. Or if you press U to select the shape tool, you can just adjust them on canvas here. And honestly, this is just so flipping cool. <laughs> hey, and oh, look at that. Here we go. Oh, look, a flower, beautiful. Do we have any presets up here? We do. Oh, there we go. Oh, these are just great. That's a nice one. That's a nice flower. So yeah, loads of shapes to play around with there and highly encourage you to experiment. And what have we got here? The picture frame rectangle tool. Okay, so this is really good for adding placeholder content to a document. So it's not something I ever used much in InDesign, but it can be very good if you want to add space for pictures and content to go. And we've got the same here as well. Picture frame ellipse tool. So very similar, but more elliptical or circular. And these can be very useful when wireframing a layout as well. 
Right, we have the place tool. Simply click this and then pick an image from your computer and place it and drop it in. Super simple. Uh, I don't have anything there. So let's just take a screenshot. And there we go. Oh, this is going to get a bit trippy now. So we can single click to place at its native size, or we can click and drag and place it in like so. And what have we got here? Data merge layout tool. Okay, so it says draws a grid layout that repeats as new pages are created during data merge. Data merge, whether in Affinity or in design, is something that I've rarely ever used. So I'm not going to try and be clever and pretend that I know what the hell this does. So that will probably be a separate video at some point. Right, let's go down here. Vector crop tool. Ah, so this is more for cropping images. So slightly different to the crop tool in the Pixel Studio. And if we switch back to layers, yeah, it appears to have added a mask, a clipping mask. Can we hide that? Yes, we can. Okay, so the crop tool adds a clipping mask. And if we twizzle this down, yeah, we can see that there and we could select it. And let's delete it. Yeah, there we go. And we have our original image back. Right, underneath this, we have the fill tool. Now, if we just click and drag, I yeah, it makes it black and white, which isn't really what we want. So let's go up to pixel, down to new fill layer. And we can click and drag. This feature does seem a little bit bugged when I'm doing it above an image. So I tried this in another video and it didn't work. If you do have this problem, just create a new document. Uh, we need to add a new fill layer. There we go drop in a fill and then what I would do is just copy and paste this into this document here and then it should remember to work. So yeah, I'm not sure if I'm using that wrong or if it's a bug, but that is one way that you can get a fill layer into the document. Okay, now that we've got it working, what we can do with fill layers is we can actually choose the type so we can have solid, we can just pick a solid color or we could choose a linear gradient or a radial gradient and we can go and pick the colors and this tool is super easy to use love how fast and responsive it is and there's lots of other options down here as well like bitmap we played around with this on stream the other day it definitely needs a bit more time to kind of get my head around it so we can add that screenshot. Oh, this is going to be even more trippy. <laughs> and we can just use this to make patterns. And I just love how fast and responsive this is. And we can hold shift if we want to snap it. So uh, yeah, once you've added a fill layer, it's like a very general type of layer and you can just fill it with lots of different things. And uh, yeah, I do love that. But let's get rid of it again. Below this, we have the transparency tool. Now this is great. Can we apply this to an image? Yes, we can. This is fantastic. So this works very similarly to the gradient tool, but we're fading the image to transparency. So if you want to fade something in or out, this is a really easy way to do it. And then up here, we can choose different types as well. So radial, radial fade, lovely. And then I think, is it this one? No. Reverse, there we go. So it kind of flips it around the other way. So very similar to the gradient tool and uh, yeah, very useful. And then down here, we've covered these already, but we'll cover them again very quickly. We have the color picker tool. We can hover over to select colors and we can see those RGB values. Click and this will become uh, apparently the color of the image. Didn't know it did that in layout mode, but there we go. You learn something new every day. And then underneath we have the style picker tool. So if you want to copy the style from one image, you can select it. This could be colors, layer properties, stroke widths, all that stuff. And you can then sample that. And then you can apply those same style properties to another layer. We've got the hand tool, which is H, but personally I prefer to use spacebar because it's just quicker and easier. And then we've got the zoom tool, which is Z or Z on the keyboard. And we can use this to zoom in or out of different points. And then at the very bottom, we've got color pickers for our fill and our stroke color. So we could go and double click this and we get the color picker. We can pick a color and apparently in layout mode, it applies it to the selected image. Let's go and play around with this. There we go, fantastic. So if you want orange liquidy ink, that's how you do it.
And uh, yeah, there we go. Those are all of the tools in the layout studio in the new version of Affinity.